हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दिस लेक्चर ऑन द सूडो एनमॉस फैमिली ऑफ द सर्किट्स एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वी विल हैव अ लुक एट द टू इनपुट नाइन गेट्स एंड द टू इनपुट नॉर गेट्स एंड यू नो डिजाइंड यूजिंग द सूडो एनमॉस सर्किट फैमिली सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर स्लाइड आई हैव जस्ट शोन द टू इनपुट नाइन गेट सो एज आई हैड सेड द सूडो एनमॉस सर्किट will always have an uh, operating or a working uh, pmos so the pmos is always uh, the gate of the pmos is always connected to the ground so that forms the pull up circuit and all the logic is actually uh, done or taken care by this uh, the pull uh, down circuit so for a pseudo uh, nmos and especially designing the two input nand gate we need uh, two of the transistors in the pull down side Two of the NMOS transistors on the pull down side, and then on the pull up side, we will have only one uh, transistor which is always connected to the ground. That means that the PMOS transistor is always on. Uh, what we need is uh, to size these transistors up such that uh, uh, the the most so that we can design the most primitive two input NAND gate using the pseudo NMOS circuit families. Uh, in in the pseudo nmos uh, inverter side of the circuit we had a size of uh, you know on the pmos side we had uh, so let me write it down we had a size of uh, so this was always on and this was connected to the v input and we had the vdd here and then this is the ground on the pmos side we had uh, uh, 2 by 3 and on the nmos side we had 4 by 3 So what we need is at most primitive two input NAND gate. Uh, so and if I see on the on the pull up side on the one PMOS transistor, I'm going to follow this. So same two by three will come on to the PMOS side. Or rather, I you know if it is X here, uh, four by three represents X. Then this will be X by two. And on the pull down side, uh, what we need is you know if there are two transistors on the pull down side, I have to make sure that the sizes. now the sum of the sizes will give me an equivalent transistor of 4 by 3 or a value of x so if i size the two transistors individually as 2x and 2x then the equivalent transistor will be nothing but of the size x right the reason is uh, it will give the current of uh, x into i if i have two transistors 2x and 2x uh, the total current here uh, will be nothing but i into x and x by 2 will give me a current of i x by 4 And uh, and that that's the reason why you know we have this two by three here, which is nothing but x by two, and then eight by three, which is nothing but two uh, x, and then eight by three, two x. So it is basically derived from the pseudo NMOS inverter, where we had a size of two by two is two by three is to four by three. That four by three component has been uh, increased to eight by three and eight by three. And if you you know it just resembles to our uh, two input NAND gate uh, with a size of two and two on the pull down side. and the inverter size was actually 1 on the uh, pull down side so 1 became 2 and 2 here also uh, the uh, 4 by 3 became 8 by 3 and 8 by 3 in the two transistors and 2 by 3 remains the same as that of the pseudo nmos inverters uh, pull up uh, uh, pmos uh, transistor size so if now i have 2 by 3 and 8 by 3 and 8 by 3 i know this uh, you know the benchmark inverter for this uh, the falling uh, down output Will be two is to one because this, this gives me a current of uh, four uh, four by three i and then this charging current of i by three. So the capacitor's output current or the discharging current will be i. So my two is to one benchmark inverter will give me a current capacitor output current as i. For two by three uh, on the pull up side, so the benchmark inverter here will be nothing but two by three is to one by three. As an inverter, because this current, uh, you know, the, when the V input or both the transistors will be off, then only we will have the rising output. The rising output current will always be I by three. So two by three is to one by three benchmark inverter will give me uh, the rising current of I by three. So in that sense, what should be the logical effort? Now the logical effort uh, will be nothing but the input capacitance eight by three here. Divided by two by three plus one by three, which would be one. So eight by three will be the logical out effort for the going up signal. For the going down signal, the logical effort will be nothing but eight by three divided by two plus one. So that will be three eight by nine. G average turns out to be sixteen by nine. And if I want to compare with that of the regular uh, CMOS uh, two input nine gate, uh, the 
the G average or the G value was nothing but 4 by 3. The parasitic, uh, the normalized parasitic for going up will be nothing but uh, whatever is the capacitance seen in this particular output node, which will be nothing but 8 by 3 and 2 by 3. So 8 by 3 plus 2 by 3 will be nothing but 10 by 3 divided by the benchmark inverters uh, output node capacitance, which will be nothing but 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3, which is 1. So finally, we'll get 10 by 3. Parasitics for going down output signal will be nothing but uh, again 10 by 3, 8 by 3 plus 2 by 3 will give me 10 by 3 here divided by uh, uh, 2 is to 1 which will be nothing but 3 so it is 10 by 9 so the p average turns out to be 20 by 9 again it is actually uh, you know greater than the value of 2 right 2 is for the regular uh, cmos structure 2 input nand case had a parasitic of 2 and the logical effort of 4 by 3 here both the uh, the logical effort as well as the parasitics in terms of the average turns out to be greater than that of uh, the 2 and 4 by 3 Right, going uh, moving ahead, let's uh, see the two input NOR gate, structure of the two input NOR gate. Again, in a pseudo NMOS uh, circuit family, we will have the pull up side uh, with or uh, represented by the PMOS, which is always on. So, I will have a PMOS here, which is uh, always on. That means that the gate is connected to the ground, and then the size of that will be 2 by 3. Because it's a NOR gate, on the pull down side, I will have a lot of uh, parallel transistors. Uh, uh, and uh, each of the inputs will be connected to the individual uh, parallel transistors. So it's a two input NOR gate, so I will have two of the transistors and the size of this will be nothing but uh, similar to that uh, the size of the inverters uh, pull down circuit, so which is turns out to be 4 by 3, so I have taken the size of 4 by 3 and 4 by 3. So under worst case condition, I will have one of the branches to be on to be operating. So I will get uh, the current of uh, driving from the NMOS will be 4i by 3. Current driving from the PMOS will be uh, i by 3. So the output current, the output capacitor discharging current will be nothing but i. Right. So in this case, to find out the logical effort, uh, the benchmark inverter for the pull up side will be nothing but 2 by 3 is to 1 by 3. And uh, for the pull down circuit, uh, it will be nothing but 2 is to 1 inverter. So in that case, the logical effort for going up signal will be nothing but, uh, you know, the input capacitance here will be 4 by 3 divided by 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3 turns out to be uh, 4 by 3. Logical effort for going down signal is nothing but again 4 by 3, that is the input uh, seen by, you know, one of the inputs here, uh, 4 by 3 divided by uh, uh, 2 plus 1, so that will become 4 by 9. So the average uh, logical effort will be nothing but uh, 8 by 9, which turns out to be much, much better than that of the 5 by 3, which we had seen in a regular CMOS structure for a 2-input NOR gate. And in, in terms of the logical effort, this is actually better than that of the inverters. Right? Uh, the normalized parasitics, so if I find out what is the parasitic seen at this output node, which is nothing but 4 by 3 plus 4 by 3 plus 2 by 3, which is 10 by 3, see? And uh, the benchmark inverters uh, output capacitance will be 1 here, 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3. And then for this one, it is nothing but 3. So the parasitics for going up signal will be 10 by 3 divided by 1, which will be 10 by 3. And for the going down, parasitic will be 10 by 3 divided by 3, uh, which will be 10 by 9. So the average turns out to be 20 by 9. Again, it is greater than the value of 2, uh, which we had seen uh, for the regular CMOS structured uh, to, uh, to input an OR gate. But the logical effort here, you know, the the normal uh, two input NOR gate sees a, uh, the logical effort of five by three uh, using the uh, the regular structure CMOS structure. Here it is actually eight by nine, and that's a vast difference here, right? So that's a uh, you know one of the major advantages of using the pseudo NMOS family structure, especially for the NOR gates. And the NOR gates are usually uh, are implemented in the memory design. And where you will see that the pseudo NMOS is there. And the reason is because the logical effort is so low, uh, so low than that of the, you know, it is very much lower than that of the 5 by 3. Uh, so it, it, it gives a better performance. And in terms of the memory design, you will see most of the, you know, mostly uh, the NOR gate implementation and there we were going to, or, you know, it has been observed that we will have the pseudo NMOS structure uh, to input NOR gates or whatever K input NOR gates. All right, going ahead. So what should be the logical effort for an N input NOR gate? 
So it will be the same 2 by 3 on the uh, PMOS side and then 4 by 3 on the on all the uh, parallel transistors which are on uh, located on the uh, pull down side. So for an N inputs, the parasitics here uh, seen in the output node will be nothing but 4 by 3 N plus 2 by 3 here. The logical effort remains the same 4 by 3 for the going up and then uh, for going down 4 by 9 and the average is 8 by 9 which is you know much much lower than that of 5 by 3. The parasitics for going up will now change because of this n input so 4 by 3 n plus 2 by 3 uh, uh, divided by 2 by 3 plus uh, uh, 1 by 3 so that is 1 so 2 by 3 plus 4 by 3 into n becomes the parasitics normalized parasitics for going up signal. Normalized parasitics for going down signal turns out to be nothing but the same value 4 by 3 n plus 2 by 3 divided by uh, the benchmark inverter here for going down is nothing but 2 is to 1. So that's why we see in the denominator 3C, right? So the average is nothing but 2 by 3 plus 4 by 3 into N uh, multiplied by 1 plus uh, 1 by 3 divided the whole divided by 2. All right. So that's, that's what we see here. So the finally we will get 4 by 9 into 2N plus 1. All right. So, for an n input a NOR gate, the parasitic is, uh, is a function of the n, whereas the logical effort is independent of the number of the inputs, it turns out to be 8 by 9, right, which is very, very lower than that of the uh, 5 by 3 value. Okay, so let's take an example of designing the circuit using the pseudo, uh, uh, pseudo NMOS NOR gates. Let's say that the size of the pseudo uh, and most NOR gate is X. We have K inputs. So in the in the previous slide, we had seen an expression of the parasitic which, uh, which varies with respect to the number of inputs N. Here it is nothing but K inputs. So we will replace that N term with that of the K variable. And each of these inputs is coming from an inverter which has a size of one, the gate size of one. That means that the input capacitance to this particular inverter, the regular inverter is one. Uh, remember that these inverters are the normal inverters and not the pseudo and MOS inverters. So G1, the logical effort of this particular inverter is 1. G2 uh, is nothing but 8 by 9. That is what we had seen previously, the pseudo and MOS and all gates. Parasitic is actually 1. Parasitic for the pseudo and MOS and all gate is nothing but uh, 4 by 9, 2K plus 1. So I've replaced the term uh, K here in, uh, uh, in place of the uh, N variable. This one is a load capacitance of HC. Uh, so the electrical effort for this particular second stage, uh, you know, pseudo NMOS NOR gate will be nothing but H by X. And then the electrical effort for the first stage will be nothing but X by one. And if I take, uh, you know, if I want to, because there are two stages given to us, and if I want to find out the, uh, the minimum delay, we need to see, uh, say that this individual stages sees the same effort so I'm going to calculate the path effort here. The path effort is nothing but uh, the product of all the individual stage efforts. And then if I do uh, you know, uh, the square root of that particular F value, the path effort uh, value, then I should be able to assign the best stage efforts to the individual stages. So the product of all the stage efforts will be nothing but GIHI, which will be nothing but one into X by one. Uh, multiplied by 8 by 9 multiplied by h by x turns out to be uh, uh, 8 by 9 into h. And if I take the square root of that, that will be the individual stage effort. So it is, uh, you know, the square root of 8 by 9 into h will be uh, assigned to individual stages. And if I can do that, I should be able to find out what should be the x size in terms of h, right? And then I should be able to find out what is the delay expression in terms of the H value as well. So the delay is nothing but the P average because we have using uh, the pseudo NMOS where the, the, normal, the, the normalized P value for going up and going down will be different. So we take the average value for the pseudo NMOS NOR gate and then the inverter is anyways the parasitics of one and then plus two into the individual stage efforts. Uh, so that is nothing but square root of eight H by nine. This one is nothing but 4 by 9 into uh, 2k plus 1, that is the, the normalized parasitics which we have seen. So the overall delay is given by this particular expression. 
right? So if I know the value of k and if I know the value of h, I should be able to find out what is the delay. And this delay will be the normalized delay. So if I want to find out the absolute delay, it should be multiplied by 3rc. And if rc is equal to 1 picoseconds, uh, we should be able to estimate the delay in terms of the picoseconds. Right, hope this is clear. Finally, uh, if I want to find out what should be the size, right? So the individual stage efforts is F cap, uh, which is given as a square root of eight by nine into H. So that will be G2 into H2. Uh, G2 value uh, is nothing but eight by nine, the logical effort and H2 is H by X. So the X value turns out to be square root of eight by nine into H. So, so this will be two root, uh, uh, so this is the x value 2 by 3 uh, square root of 2h 2 by 3 square root of 2h and then so on so this x value will be uh, uh, this particular value of the uh, the size of the nmos transistor so that's what we wanted to see so i'm going to the previous set of slides so this is the x value we want so what this pseudo nmos uh, you know pseudo nmos nor gate represents is uh, uh, on the pull down side and then on the pull up side I have k inputs this is the PMOS VDD right so this is my x value this is my x value so if this is my uh, x value because this is the input capacitance seen by the input nodes here right so this is the one input this is the second input and then so on k inputs uh, this is anyways grounded. If I have the value of x here, x by 2 will be uh, my width on the PMOS side. Right? That's what we had seen for the primitive word pseudo NMOS to input NOR gates. So if this size turns out to be x, this particular width on the PMOS side will be x by 2. So going back uh, to the present slide where we found the x value is uh, square root of 8 by 9. So that's what I have written here, square root of uh, 8 by 9 into h, which will be nothing but 2 by 3, uh, and then square root of 2 h. So individual uh, sizes on the uh, NMOS or the pull down side will be nothing but 2 by 3 is square root of 2 h. And uh, so the, the PMOS transistor size will be nothing but, which is always on in the pseudo NMOS uh, circuit families will be uh, this particular size divided by 2. So it will be square root of 2 h divided by 3. Right, so we have identified the sizes of the pseudo NMOS circuit for the two input uh, for the k input NOR gates so that we will get the best delay.